Greetings, YouTubers. Ever wonder why Mississippi is such a mess? Well, we're going to go over a lot of data that I covered in my video on California. I even found a little more supplemental information, which doesn't change anything, but just added a little more to it. So, uh, all the information will be in my Ever Wonder Why California is a Mess video. All the links will be there. I'm not going to put them here. You can just see that video for the links because they're all the same. Again, here we go. Disability Beneficiaries U.S. 2017, over 10 million, 10 million 59,166. To be, example, to be exact, and the number of on disability is equal to 3.54% of the U.S. population. And then we have these number of beneficiaries and these special categories. I'll only mention them once. Musculoskeletal system and connective tissue and mental disorders, which comprise these special categories, so-called childhood and adolescent disorders not elsewhere classified, and mood disorders, that's like depression, and schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders. That's 4.7 million, 4,774,341. And the percent of those on disability for those above ailments was 47.46%. The number of those categories on disability are equal to 1.68% of the U.S. population under 65. I'll have it all going by there. And in Mississippi, we only had, of course, Mississippi is not highly populated, We only had 148,678 on disability. Those special disorders was, was uh, 66,029. Again, musculoskeletal system and connective tissue, as well as childhood and adolescent disorders not elsewhere classified, mood disorders, and schizophrenia and other psycho... psycho <laughs> I can't speak. Psychotic disorders. The percent of, of those on disability for those above ailments, 44.41%. So that's a smaller percentage than the U.S. total. But the number of those ca categories on disability are equal to 2.61 of the Mississippi under 65 population. So that's higher than the U.S. was. Mississippi's under 65 population is 0.88% of the entire U.S. under 65 population. Tables 10 and tables and 10A disabled for Mississippi is 1.38% of entire tables 10 and 10A category for the U.S. And then you've got disability beneficiary, beneficiaries for the U.S. 2016, 10,153,205. Those special disorders was 4,813,962. Percentage of those on disability for those ailments was 47.41%. And those categories of disability are equal to 1.75% of the U.S. under 65 population. Disability Beneficiaries Mississippi 2016, 150,018. Those special categories, 66,352% of those on disability for the above ailments, 44.22%. So again, that's lower than the U.S. average. But the number of those on categories of disability equal to... The number of those categories of disability are equal to 2.62% of the Mississippi under 65 population, so that's higher than the U.S. And Mississippi's under 65 population is 0.92% of the entire U.S. under 65 population. And the tables 10 and 10A disabled for Mississippi is 1.37% of the entire tables 10 and 10A category for the U.S., Disability Beneficiaries U.S. 2015, 10,237,204. Again, 10,237,204. The number on disability is equal to 3.73% of the U.S. under 65 population. Those special, special categories were equal had 4,841,954 people. Percentage of those on disability for the above ailments, 47.29%. The number of those categories of disability are equal to 1.76% of the U.S. population under 65. Disability Beneficiaries Mississippi, 2015, 152,333. Number of beneficiaries disabled to those special categories, 66,997, which is equal to the percentage of those on disability for those above ailments, 43.98%. Again, lower than the U.S. average, but... 
the number of those categories of disability are equal to 2.64% of the Mississippi under 65 population. So again, that's higher for Mississippi than it is for the U.S. at in mass. Mississippi's under 65 population is 0.92% of the entire U.S. under 65 population. Tables 10 and tables 10A disabled for Mississippi is 1.38% of entire tables 10 and 10A category for the U.S. So Mississippi's got some problems there. The percentage of people on disability for those uh, questionable disorders was lower than the U.S. percentage, but the percentage of those, the number of those on those special categories was a higher percentage of Mississippi's under 65 population than it is for the U.S. at large. So there you go. More data for you. Why is Mississippi such a mess? I think we're finding out why Mississippi is such a mess. Mississippi per pupil expenditures adjusted for inflation in CES data. And again, I need to mention this doesn't take into account cost of living, which is, say, lower in rural Kansas than it is in New York City. So keep that in mind. Every year, Mississippi was spending less per pupil. Another thing I need to mention, Mississippi was a, a Democrat-dominated state until Obamacare. After the 2010 elections, then Democrats started getting thrown out of the state legislature. So you need to keep that in mind, too. I don't know how many people will. They probably don't know that. But for every year, Mississippi was lower than the national average. For example, in 2010, 2011 through 2013, 2014, the national average was $11,239. Mississippi eight was in the same time frame was eight thousand four hundred forty dollars and fifty cents. So a lot of that would be blamed on Democrats. If you're looking for someone to blame, I just think Mississippi is just a mess. Doesn't matter whether you elect Republicans or Democrats if they keep keep doing the same thing. So I've got all that data going by. If you want to freeze the video and look at it as it rolls by. But for every time frame, they were lower. Mississippi pupil-teacher ratio. Now, on this one, they've tracked pretty good and gone below the U.S. average. So, for example, fall 1992 through fall 1995, Mississippi's average pupil-per-teacher ratio was 17.75. The U.S. average was 17.35. Fall 2009 through fall 2011, Mississippi 15.3, 15.13 pupils per teacher. U.S. average was 15.8, so they're lower now. Fall 2012 through 2014, Mississippi was 15.2. U.S. average was 16. School year 2015, 2016, 15.1 pupils per teacher in Mississippi. U.S. average again is 16, so Mississippi is lower than the U.S. average. They have smaller class sizes than the typical U.S. school, than the typical U.S. state, so... Pupils per staff ratio, Mississippi is also lower than the U.S. average. Mississippi 2009 through 2011, 7.13 pupils per staff member, U.S. average 7.96. Mississippi 2012 through 2014, pupils per staff ratio in Mississippi 7.2, U.S. average 8.06, so they're lower. So they don't need smaller class sizes, and they don't need more non-teaching members. Speaking of... Teachers as a percentage of staff in public elementary and secondary school systems. Mississippi, fall 2009 through 2011, 47.16% of their staff were teachers. In the U.S., it was 50.36%. Again, Mississippi, 47.16% of their staff was teachers. were teachers in fall 2009 through 2011. The U.S. average was 50.36, so maybe they need to get rid of some non-teaching staff and add a few teachers there. Mississippi fall 2012 through 2014, 47.3% of their staff was teachers. U.S. average was 50.2%. So again, there, maybe they got some bloat, some bloat they need to uh, cut some fat. Percentage of public school students participating in English language learner programs. If you remember, California had a high, holy moly average. Not so in Mississippi. Mississippi 2009 through 2011, only 1.2% of their public school students were participating in English language learner programs. 1.2%, the U.S. average was 9.1%. Mississippi 2012 through 2014, 1.53% 
of public school students in Mississippi were participating in English language learner programs. U.S. average was 9.3%. So that's not the problem. Like California is having to teach a whole bunch of kids, Hispanic kids, we'll just let the kid out of the bag, who don't know English. And the sad thing, there's a lot of taxpayers, there's a lot of taxpayers in Mississippi paying for that. Well, the ones that do pay taxes. And here we got, here we have average National Assessment of Educational Progress reading scales, scores of 4th and 8th graders in public schools, and percentage scoring at or above selected reading achievement levels by English language learner status and state. Mississippi 4th graders, English language learners, these are the ones who don't know English, at or above basic reporting standards, not met, too few cases for a reliable estimate in Mississippi, the U.S. average was 32% at or above proficient, Again, too few cases in Mississippi for a reliable estimate. The U.S. average was 8%. Mississippi fourth graders, not, not English language learners. At or above basic, only 61%. U.S. average is 72%. Mississippi fourth graders, not English language learners. At or above proficient, only 26%. U.S. average is 38%. So they're lagging. They've been lagging for some time. <clears throat> It's just the same thing over and over. I bet more Medicaid, more food stamps, more public housing, uh, more spending on public schools, and Mississippi will be in a, a nirvana, an economic and cultural nirvana. Uh, no. Mississippi 8th graders, English language learners, 8th graders, English language learners. Again, again, not enough uh, reliable cases for any estimate in Mississippi, so... We'll skip over that. Mississippi 8th graders, not English language learners. At or above basic, 63%. U.S. average, 78%. At or above proficient, 20%. U.S. average, 35%. So Mississippi's lagging there. In every educational category, they are lagging behind the U.S. average, which isn't really that great anyway. Number of percentage of homeless students enrolled in public and elementary secondary schools the school year 2009-2010 through 2014-2015, the Mississippi average was 2.05%. The U.S. average was 2.28%. So in Mississippi, it's not as big a problem having homeless students in school, which creates, if you're homeless, getting an education can be a big problem. But maybe if they spent more on public housing, I don't know. So obviously not having a high percentage of homeless students, especially compared to the U.S. average, Mississippi still has some issues. Percentage of persons 18 to 24 years old and age 25 and over by educational attainment and state. This is for 2000. Selected years 2000, 2014, and 2015. Note, high school completion includes equivalency programs such as a GED. Mississippi, less than high school completion... Mississippi, less than high school completion 2000, their average was 27.1%. U.S. average was 19.6%. So over a quarter of kids in Mississippi, not high school completion. Big problem. If you can't even finish high school, that's a big problem. And a lot of them that are finishing high school still don't know much because our public school system has gone straight into the toilet. Mississippi, less than high school completion, 2014, 17.3%, U.S. average, 13.1%. So Mississippi went down substantially, but they're still lagging behind. Mississippi, less than high school completion, 2015, 16.2%, the U.S. average was 12.8%. Still lagging. In 2014-2015, all ethnic groups, Asian, Black, White, Hispanic, underperform in Mississippi, Although Hispanic was within the margin of error for 2014, it's particularly bad for blacks in Mississippi. Only 76.8% in 2014 and only 77.6% in 2015 completed high school. They are well below national average for high school completion or higher. So, especially black children are not doing well in Mississippi's vaunted public schools. Maybe if Mississippi spent 10000 more per student, things would change. Doubt it, Chief. Maybe if Washington handed out free Ritalin, free condoms, and guaranteed jobs. See, the Bernie Sanders template 
is not going to make education better. He just he doesn't care. He just wants more people who are drones and and he'll feel their pain rather than fixing the system. School choice will go a long way to to uh, help with that. But Mississippi's public schools are terrible, just like California's. Although I think Mississippi's in even worse shape, even though California is uh, spending a lot of money teaching a lot of these kids English, don't even know English, and they're still failing. So both of them are, it's just terrible. It's, and they don't care. These politicians don't care. National School Lunch Program, percentage of public school students eligible for free or reduced price lunch. And the selected years were 2000-2001 school year, 2010-2011 school year, 2013-2014 school year, and 2014-2015 school year. Mississippi average for those years, and all this money we're spending is still not helping. We keep voting Democrat, but we're still poor, even though on the uh, Mississippi sends a lot of Republicans to Washington. And in, prior to 2010, Democrats dominated the state legislature, and it, nothing's changed. It's just the same old... So Mississippi average for those years, 70.2% of public school students are getting a free or reduced price lunch. Why? Why do you think they're all poor? We'll get to that. U.S. average was 47.55%. <laughs> only, only almost half in the U.S., but Mississippi, it's over 70%. Send them some, yeah, I bet if we expanded the National School Lunch Program, Mississippi would be churning out Einsteins. Government doesn't fix problems, people. Government doesn't fix cultural problems. Total and current expenditures per pupil in fall enrollment in public elementary and secondary schools. Now, I'm not going to read all this off. But in every single year that I looked at, until we get down to 2010, 2011, and that must be the Republicans in the state legislature. I suppose it could be. But every year prior to that, from 2004, 2005, all the way through 2008, 2009, Mississippi's instruction spending as a percentage of all spending was higher than the U.S. average. And then from 2010 through 2011 school year to through 2013-2014 school year, it got lower than the U.S. average. For example, in 2013-2014, Mississippi instruction as a percentage of all spending was 52.49%. The U.S. average was 54.52. little food for thought there. But again, in the U.S., 40, over 47% of all instruction spent... All education spending is not going to in instruction. I wonder what it's going to. Huh. Maybe the union. I wonder if the unions have anything to do with that. Here's a part of the reason Mississippi's in such bad shape. Births to unmarried women by race and Hispanic origin of mother. Mississippi average 2010 through 2017, a staggering 54.07% of all births to, were to unmarried women. Now, we know to progressives, marriage is important, because how long did we listen to them whine about homosexual marriage? Well, at least once they found out they could get votes with it. Births to unmarried women, Mississippi average 2010 through 2017, 54.07%. U.S. average was 40.36%. Mississippi Hispanic for the same time frame, 54.52%. Mississippi white for the same time frame, this is where I'm racist. Only, yeah, only 32.35%. So the white trash, only about a third of their kids are to unmarried uh, women. So Cletus's girlfriend has a kid, and and uh, they're not married, and they're counted. Mississippi black, 80.6%. I know why blacks in Mississippi are poor. One, the public school's failing them, public school system. Two, maybe dad got put in jail for smoking weed. That probably that that should be remedied. Three, they don't if they do have a father, <laughs> he's absentee if they know who he is, if they even know who he is. But yeah, eighty point six percent of blacks in Mississippi are born to unmarried women. Maybe that's part of the reason why blacks in Mississippi are usually dirt poor. Maybe. Maybe, just maybe. Some people might figure it out. Homicide rates per 100,000. Note, since I could not find an in-depth crime in Mississippi report, I simply used FBI data which, data, which may or may not be spot on. It's probably not too far off. 
Homicide rates per 100,000, Mississippi 2012 through 2017, 7.85, USA 2012 through 2017, 4.86. So again, over and over and over, kids are failing school, they're dropping out of school, they're uh, living in fragmented families. And we'll get to the next one. They're doing drugs. Probably getting thrown in jail for doing drugs. The public school's failing them. They get in a gang. Bernie Sanders feels your pain. It's the same thing over and over and over and over and over. When are people going to wake up? Mississippi STD infection rates. Chlamydia, gonorrhea, and primary and secondary syphilis. The 1996 through 2014 average, 278.21 per 100,000. Again, Mississippi STD infection rates, chlamydia, gonorrhea, and primary and secondary syphilis, 1996 through 2014. The average was 278.21. 278.21 per 100,000. USA average for the same time frame and same diseases, 152.75. So Mississippi, holy moly. That's another one. They're dropping out of school. The public schools failed them. They live in fragmented families. They get STDs. They pass them around. They don't get an education. They drop out of school. They get STDs. They pass them around. They kill each other in the hood. That's why Mississippi's poor. Mississippi holds a dubious distinction of being third in chlamydia infection rates, first in gonorrhea infection rates, and fifth in primary and secondary syphilis infection rates during that time frame. Yikes! Good grief! And then you've got the 2015-2016 average. It's not getting any better in Mississippi. Okay, remember, their 1996 through 2014 rolling average was 278.21. For those same diseases, the 2015-2016 average went from 278.21. Now it's 283.83. I bet if we spend more money on free condoms, it'll get better. And the U.S. average for that same time frame in 2015-2016 was only 209.53. <laughs> Wow. That's why Mississippi's poor. I don't have an education, but I got I got chlamydia. Yeah. Okay, good. HIV infection rates. This is HIV diagnoses. This is some of the info that I didn't include in California. Well, I'll I'll include it later. I mean, if anybody wants it, it doesn't really change anything. I've got the US the Mississippi average for 2008-2015 HIV diagnoses was 20.06 per 100,000. Again, HIV diagnoses for Mississippi 2008 through 2015 was 20.6 per 100,000. And the U.S. average for the same time frame was only 16.36. So if you're wondering why Mississippi's poor, there's some of the reasons. Fragmented families, failing, pathetic public schools. Uh, these idiots don't know anything other than how to shoot each other. There's a lot of crime in poor black neighborhoods in Mississippi. Just if you've ever visited Jackson, Mississippi, there are certain neighborhoods where you do not want to go. And don't even try it. High STD infection rates, it's only getting worse. You know, the more I think about it, I like to, the government causes plenty of problems, but I like to, I think the people. The we the people, the you know, a lot of these idiots voting. And it doesn't matter. Mississippi's sending a lot of Republicans to Washington. Mississippi's gone from a high a Democrat dominated state to a Republican state and it's not changing. So yeah, there I blame we the people for a lot of problems because there's no personal responsibility. So there's some food for thought for you. The links are in that California video that I mentioned. If you're under, if you're wondering why Mississippi is a mess, it's not because California or not because the government's not sending enough money there. It's because uh, on the state level, the public schools are a complete failure. I think that's the biggest problem. That and fragmented families. These people are like a bunch of you let stray cats out. What are they going to do? They're going to reproduce. That's all, and that's what these people do. And they, the and and there's a lot of states in the South that have huge infection std infection rates granted it's not 90 percent of the people walking around but compared to the u.s average it's bad so and again 80 over half the children are born out of wedlock and 80 percent of blacks 54 percent hispanics 32 percent for whites they blow the u.s average out of the water so if you're wondering why mississippi's a mess 
there you go. Have a nice day, and don't thank me now for the depressing information.